Good day, my name is Lorenzo Escalar, and today I would be tackling our position paper on death penalty entitled The Punishment of a Forgotten Era. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. This is how the old saying goes. Coined by the notorious Hammurabi's Code around 1700 BC, this antiquated expression has ended up being the premise of a massive political talk over the past few decades. The death penalty. The death penalty, in some cases called capital punishment, is an execution of an offender sentenced to death after conviction by a court of law of a criminal offense. It has been a controversial and very debatable issue for centuries. Since the beginning of civilization, individuals have been sentenced to capital punishment. It was once acknowledged as a reasonable and fair punishment by governmental bodies for a period in time. As time passed by, death penalty has become more humane, going from beheadings to hanging to electric chairs to now a lethal injection. However, be that as it may, the point is that they still take place in a civilization like today. The issue with capital punishment is that a few individuals think it is inhumane or immoral, even unconstitutional, while there are others that think the exact opposite and believe that it is vital for a well-established administrative framework or governmental system. While many still advocate for the continued use of capital punishment, the process is not the most cost-effective, efficient, consistent, or up-to-date means of punishment that we could be using today. Well-built cases can be made that strongly suggest opposing the death penalty is a way better option in general. To begin with, the death penalty is universally known as inhumane, unjust, and a violation of human rights. Many people argue that the death penalty does indeed violate human rights including the right to have a life and the right not to be subjected to torture or barbaric, inhumane, and unusual punishment. In fact, both rights mentioned are protected under the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which have been adopted by the United Nations in the year 1948. The death penalty is inherently cruel and truly irreversible, which becomes a huge reason for human rights to oppose death penalty in all circumstances. It is cruel in a way that it resembles a legacy from the early days of penology, when slavery and other types of capital retribution were common. In a civilized community, however, inhumane and cruel practices, specifically executions, are not to be observed and is not anymore tolerated. The death penalty has also made its commotion with regards to deterrence and effectivity. Many who claim that deterrence justifies the execution of certain offenders carry the burden of proving that the death penalty is an actual deterrent to crime, since the evidences and facts does not favor it at all. It is simply not an effective deterrent to crime. Years of deterrence studies came to an overwhelming conclusion that the death penalty is indeed no more of a deterrent in comparison with the sentence of life in prison. Data shows that the capital punishment system is still undependable. As mentioned in a recent study by Columbia Univer University Law School, two-thirds of all capital trials contain consequential flaws. With this, we can safely assume that the death penalty is just not effective in its goal of reducing crime. Another argument to be made against capital punishment resides with the risks that are involved with it. The risk of executing the innocent precludes the use of the death penalty. The death penalty itself imposes an irreversible sentence. Once a prisoner's life had been put to death, no solution nor process can be done to save the life that has been executed and change the mistake that had been done. Considerable evidences had been presented that lots of mistakes have been done in putting people's lives to death. According to statistics from Michigan State University and Death Penalty Information Center, at least 88 prisoners have been freed from death row since 1973 
after proof of their innocence was uncovered. About 650 people were executed during the same time frame. As a result, with every seven people killed, we discovered one inmate on death row who could never have been sentenced to death. With human lives on the line, these statistics indicate an unacceptably high chance of killing innocent people. Finally, for the last claim, which is probably the most practical reason to reject death penalty as a whole, involves the massive expenses brought about by the practice itself. Now, many people assume that by employing the death penalty, the state saves money since an executed person no longer requires further confinement, health care, and related expenses. That assumption, however, has been proven wrong in the modern application of capital punishment. The death penalty's costs are far more expensive than utilizing a system of life of imprisonment as an alternative punishment. The longer trials and appeals required when a person's life is on the line, the requirement for more lawyers and experts on each side of the case, and as well as the relative rarity of executions are some of the reasons for the unexpectedly high cost of the death penalty. As evidence, a 2008 report issued in California, USA stated that the cost of the capital punishment system were about $137 million per year and that implementing the reforms to ensure a fair process would cost about $232.7 million per year. By contrast, the same report found that a system in which life in prison with the maximum penalty is issued would only cost $11.5 million per year. A considerably cheaper alternative, yet effective nonetheless. With all of these arguments and claims, it is clear that the death penalty is simply not a viable option, with better, more acceptable, less controversial, and less expensive alternatives out there. One of those being life of imprisonment. It is cheaper and more humane. It doesn't cross the line of human rights, and of course, it will also, eventually, just yield the same result as death penalty. Why should we waste precious resources and money just to provide a spotlight for the worst criminals and make a public spectacle of their demise? If we could just focus those said resources in better, more productive things that provides an actual advantage to society. The concept of the death penalty might have worked in the older generations of society, but in the modern and contemporary days of civilization, it is only a hindrance a controversy, and a sickness without cure. It is just a punishment of a forgotten era of civilization. Fighting fire with fire will only make the flames grow stronger. Defeating evil with even more evil will only replace its own wickedness. And using the death penalty for serious offenders will only amount to killing a fellow human being. It doesn't make the world a better, brighter, and stronger place. As the famous Mahatma Gandhi would say, an eye for an eye will only make the whole world blind.